time to talk about some tricks that may be new to some of you. Maybe it's not. If you know any cool sorting tricks, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Let's just get right into it. So first of all, we're going to start with a uh, unsorted list. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and do a quick um, example. So for those of you who have done this before, um, you will know that if you do unsorted.sort, uh, you compare two values and you're basically uh, creating an integer out of it. And so um, if something's greater than and you compare it to something uh, that's less than, then it's going to be positive, if I remember correctly, and the inverse is true if it's the opposite. So what we're going to go here, what we're going to do here is we're going to say um, a dot compare to b. And then we're going to go ahead and print unsorted. And we'll see how this works out for us. So that's sorted it in the correct order. Now, if it's an integer, you can also do a common trick, which is used in JavaScript. And you end up with the exact same thing. Um, now, I saw a really cool trick today uh, from someone on Twitter. I'm going to go ahead and link it here. And what they do is they actually use A to Z. Um, and I thought that was really interesting because then it very clearly communicates that something is ascending or descending. So we've just done this one in ascending order. And if we want to switch this around Z to A, then we end up doing it in descending order. And I thought that was an awesome way to remember this stuff. Um, now, unfortunately in Dart, you're typically going to use the compare to uh, method and so it doesn't look as pretty but you can get kind of a similar mental model there if you if you want to all right so one of the things that some of you may have noticed already is that what we've actually done here is we have mutated this original list using this method um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create an immutable sort extension so real quick we're going to do an extension, uh, list x on list t, and we're going to do list t, and we're going to use the name sorted, and we will do uh, int function t, 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 compare. Why is that giving me a hard time? right there. Okay. Um, and then what we'll do here is we will actually copy the list and then return the sort. And if we do this, this is a really nice way to essentially get a immutable sort. So if we go ahead and do this and sort of sorted and then we run this you'll see that the original list order is preserved. So in this case, what we would do is we would say final sorted equals unsorted dot sorted. And now you've got the, the list sorted in the order that, that you require. So that's a nice trick. I, I use that pretty often. Um, now I'm going to show you the comparable class. So let's say we're going to make uh, final date A equals date time um, 1988. Final date B equals date time 2004. So if we go ahead and say uh, final unsorted, unsorted dates, sorted dates equals date A, date B. Um, and then we go ahead and uh, try to sort this unsorted dates dot sorted. And what you'll see here is that this also has a compare to function. Okay, so both integer 
had a compare to function and daytime had a compare to function. Now, what is this? This is the comparable class. So if we come into daytime, <clears throat> go to the very top, you'll see here that it implements comparable. Now, what is this comparable interface? It's an interface that has just this single method and it compares to another uh, object of the same type and it returns an integer and it should act um, in a way where, you know, the larger, like smaller minus larger equals, um, you know, greater than zero integer. Um, so what we can do here is we can actually create a custom comparable class. So I'm going to do that right here. So if we say class, um, oh gosh, I didn't think this through class, you know, uh, bank account and final and amount, right? And then we can say, uh, implements comparable bank account because we're comparing it to bank account. Imagine that. And then we go ahead and create this missing override. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort them based on return compare to uh, other here. We'll do this. We'll do amount dot compare to other dot amount. And so what that's going to do is that's actually going to implement the comparable interface, um, which is a nice, which is an interesting thing to have um, because now we can come in here and we can say final bank account A equals bank account $2,000. Final bank account B equals bank account $3,000. And we can actually go ahead and uh, we can actually go ahead and sort these. So final sorted bank accounts equals bank account A, comma bank account B dot sorted B A dot compare to B. Okay, great. Now. We need a two string method. So I'm going to do a cheat here, generate quick two string method. And then we're going to go ahead and run this and see what we get. So, yep, it's sorted it. Let's just make sure that the sort's actually working. Yep, okay. So it's sorting these bank accounts um, in ascending order. Awesome. Now, what you've noticed here is that we've we've typed this over and over again, right? So I'm wondering if we can refactor this. I'm going to stage all my changes. Let's go ahead and see if we can refactor this to make this easier. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say extension comparable list x t on list comparable t. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to say list t ascend get ascending. And what we're going to return is sorted a b a dot compare to b. Okay, it's giving me an issue. T extends comparable. There. All right, so now I've got ascending. So we can come in here and we can go ahead and do, grab all of these and refactor them to this ascending method. And let's see how we do. Ascending, ascending, great. Now, one other thing we can do is we can make one called descending. And we're gonna go ahead and do B dot compare to A. And we're going to go ahead and print out um, sorted bank accounts. That's going to be ascending. And then we're going to go sorted bank accounts dot descending. And let's just do it this way. Okay. 
All right, so now let's see what we end up with. So now we've got the first one's printing out ascending, the second one's printing out descending. So we've already kind of reworked the way that uh, sorting works in Dart, and we've only done it with a few lines of code, and we've ended up with a, with a really expressive way to handle these lists. Um, and we can create uh, new data classes that implement a comparable, and this will work with them as well. And I'm gonna show you one last thing, which I think is really cool. So the last thing we can do is we can actually extend comparable and add greater than and less than operators. So let's do that real quick. Extension comparable x t extends compar comparable t. Oops. On comparable t. Okay. Now we're going to do um, bool operator greater than on t other. And we're going to return um, compare to other is greater than zero. Um, and we're also going to create, oops, we're also going to create a alternative like that. Now, we're going to go up here and we are going to say, uh, let's print, print, bank account A is greater than bank account B. And if we did our job right, this will come back as false. Awesome. And then we're gonna go ahead and check if bank account A is less than bank account B. We'll run that. And there you have it. So um, in just a few moments, we have uh, created a method for doing an immutable sort. Uh, we have explained the comparable interface. We have created a custom class that uses the comparable interface. We have created a custom extension on list of comparable items that allow us to quickly put them in ascending or descending order. And we've also added a greater than and less than operator, which works on all classes that implement comparable. So if you have any other interesting tips and tricks about dealing with sorting and comparable items in Dart, go ahead and post them in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching.